prayer more than anything connects believers. Jesus said where two or three are gathered. He is there in the midst. And you can be sure Jesus is with us today. Um, I want to read to you um, the part of the Lord's Prayer uh, that's recorded for us in Luke's Gospel that uh, Luke wrote. It's a little bit different to Matthew's account, um, slightly, but it's, it, it, I like the way it introduces it to us because it tells us of the disciples coming to Jesus and saying, Master, won't you teach us how to pray? I, I think all of us, me included, we need to be taught to pray. And so here were the apostles coming to Jesus saying, teach us how to pray. And so this is what he says. When you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone who's indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. I want to look for our time together on that part of the Lord's Prayer, just the part where it says, give us this day our daily bread, or as Luke records it, and he says in verse 3 of Luke 11, here, give us day by day our daily bread. And, and I, with this all time that we have, I want to break that up for you. Um, the first of that part of that verse is, give us and the second part day by day and the third our daily bread i know if you like me you've said this prayer so many times from childhood and i i know we can so easily like just take the words for granted and i pray that today the words of jesus prayer that he is giving to you and to me will minister afresh into your spirit notice the first thing he says give us and this is us, subjects of the kingdom, coming to the king and saying, give us. Yeah. And that should immediately strike us because, you know, if you think of God's government, I mean, what kind of government on earth tells you we can go to the government and we can make our demands and our requests? I think if any way, it's the opposite way around. The government comes to us and says, give us. And, um, you know, that kind of not only today and if you think with the tax and everything else that uh, we have to tolls and all customs and duties that we are always giving and this is exactly what Samuel told Israel when they were demanding a king and they wanted to be like all the other nations and um, and and so Samuel very wisely and how insightful he was he said look this is what God says when you get a king, this is what your king's going to do. So he says, your king will take your sons and he will draft them into his army. He will take some of them and make them his farmhands. Others will build his weapons and manufacture them. Others will go and build his chariots. And he says, what's more, he'll take your daughters and he'll make them his bakers and his perfumers. Um, your grain and your grape harvest, he will take, he will tax, he will take his tenth. And Samuel said, you will be his slaves. That really, in a sense, is human government to a T. Yeah. But just think how awesome it is that Jesus, the Son of God, says that when we come to the Father, that we can say, give us. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Give us. And, you know, sometimes that that give can be very a nonchalant. Oh, Lord, just give me this today. I need strength. I need patience. I need this is what I need. Sometimes that give can be a cry. And I like what Job says, Job 34 verse 28. And it says, talking of God, that he hears the cry of the afflicted. Perhaps you in a season of your life right now where you are afflicted. Maybe your job's on the line. Maybe you being stretched to the T financially and you're going you you're really struggling at this time. Maybe this whole coronavirus has really upset your life. And you can come and you can cry before the Lord. In fact, you know there's something amazing because it says he is the cry of the afflicted. Um 
I did this little test with Karen. One night, she was fast asleep. I hope, can I tell the story? And, it really started. Yeah, and well. she was lying in bed. She was fast asleep. She was watching on her tablet. She was watching a, a movie or something with her earphones in. And she had completely fallen asleep. And I mean, she was in a heavy sleep. And um, so okay, I got there. into bed. <laughs> and I, very quietly, I took the connection of her, ear, her earphones out. And I put them into my iPad. And I looked... And I found some sound effects on YouTube. And I saw one of them was a foghorn. Like, you know, really loud marine siren. I turned it up on full. And this thing blasted. I mean, I could hear it. And it's going, eh, eh, eh. And my wife is just fast asleep. I mean, she didn't even stir at all. <laughs> I was amazed. I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. And then after that, I'm like, what? will wake my wife up. Well, we got four kids. And I can remember when we were, when they were little babies and they would cry. My wife would be up in a flash. Well, I find on YouTube a little, a little clip of a baby crying. And I put it on and I put it on just a fraction of the volume. And it was just this light. And immediately my wife's eyes opened up and she was wide awake and she was, what's that? I just started laughing. Let me just add to that, just to the thing is that he would never wake up when the babies would cry. It doesn't matter how loud they cried. So it, it, he would wake up with the foghorn. I would wake up with the crying children. That's right. But you, you know, what, what is so amazing, because that's our father. Yeah. If you think of God, when you are crying out to the Lord, he hears that cry. And in fact, even in the book of Galatians, chapter 4 and verse 6, it speaks of the Holy Spirit also crying together with us. And it says that because you are sons, because we are sons and daughters of the Most High God, God sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, crying, Abba, Father. And so even the Spirit helps us to cry to God. I think that's such an amazing thing. And just realize that, you know, the government is on his shoulders. We are subjects of that. And to God in heaven, you are not a number. I know for many governments around the world, your social security, your ID number. Listen, with God and in his kingdom, you are not a number. In fact, Jesus even said he calls his sheep by name. So always remember that. And so you can come today to the Lord and say, give us this day our daily bread. Now the second part, it tells us day by day. I like that. So I'm reading out of the New King James here. Give us day by day our daily bread. And notice he doesn't say give us our annual, our annual needs. Uh, he doesn't say give us year by year, give us month by month. He doesn't even say give us week by week. But he says give us day by day yeah. our daily bread. And listen, that ministers. Because to me, what that says is that God doesn't want you to be a Sunday Christian. He doesn't want you to be the child that will come once a week to the dad or to the mom and say, this is what I want. He wants unbroken communication. And so um, that is something that's so important day by day. And so realize as believers, we're not on pilgrimages once a year, you know, to go somewhere and talk to God. No, we are here every day, day by day, to come to the throne of grace, to pray, to call on God. Can you do that? And so realize that that's such an important part. Um, you know, I remember years ago, Someone came to me. I was speaking on prayer Sunday morning. And straight after the message, this visitor said, you know, it was really cool what you were saying about prayer. But he said, you know what ministers to me? He said, you know, every day I eat three meals. Shouldn't we come to God more consistently in prayer? And I thought, what a good thought that was. Do you know that the Jews had a custom through the Old Testament and into the New Testament of praying three times a day? Do you know that? They had three main prayer times. It was nine in the morning, hour of prayer, 12 o'clock, an hour of prayer, and three o'clock to four o'clock, an hour of prayer. 
Um, we, we know Daniel, when they, he was in Babylon and they had said, we you know going to make prayer legal for the 30 days. And it says Daniel prayed how many times that day? Three times that day, nine, 12, and three. And also, uh, we know of Peter, when we're reading in Acts, read of Peter and John going up to the temple at the hour of prayer. And so realize that God wants each of us to have daily prayer moments, daily prayer breaks when we get around and we get alone with the Lord and we start to pray. And um, something that I can say for us in our ministry where God has been challenging us so much is to expect daily miracles of God. Because God is a God who works miracles with Israel as they were going through the wilderness every single day. There was a miraculous meal provided for them. God was working miracles, providing, giving water out of the rock. Uh, when you read in the Old Testament, when you go into the New Testament, God was working miracles. Jesus was working miracles every single day. And so we can expect that of God. So remember, day by day, trust the Lord for a miracle. Won't you even pray that and say, you know, Lord, I want to ask you that every day of my life, I would see you working in some marvelous, miraculous way. Yeah, sure. We can trust him for that. So um, the last part, he says, give us day by day. And then thirdly, he says, our daily bread. Give us our daily bread. And that's the last part. And, um, you know, when I think of us coming to God, <laughs> you know, just bringing all our, bearing our needs, our weights before the Lord. We are such a needy people, aren't we? Coming before the Lord with all our wants, all our needs. Makes me think of Moses when he had to bear up all the needs and he had these long lines of Israelites coming to him to judge cases, to bear with him. Isn't that just like us? Needy. You know, they, they say that the most needy life form on this planet is a college student. <laughs> you know, for those parents, the only time they ever hear from their college student kids is, Hey, Dad, I'm out of money. I'm out of bread. I need money for the rent. You know, I've got to buy some textbooks. I mean, that's it. That's us, isn't it? You know, always coming with our needs. But listen, when you can come to God with your daily needs, He's taking care of everything. He invites us. Jesus is saying, Come. Bring those needs. I want to hear them. Share them. And what that means when we're praying for bread is you don't need to worry. He didn't say worry about your daily bread. He said come to God and ask for it. Yes. Don't worry about it. Uh, years ago when I finished high school, I joined the Navy. And um, I can tell you as long as I was in the Navy, I never worried where a meal was going to come from. We ate Day in, day out, there was breakfast, lunch, supper, and even tea in between. Everything was provided for us. And at that time, I could think, and the one thing I knew is, you know, we would get hungry, you know, marching, working, doing PT and everything. And the one thing we always looked forward to was our daily bread, our meals. And I can remember on a couple of occasions, getting in the truck and traveling. The base where I was for most of my naval career was a really small base. And um, we would take these trips to headquarters to go and, and to get our food supplies that we needed for the month. And I can remember getting in the truck and going and we'd have a, we called it a requisition form and we would fill it out with all the items we needed. And we would take this three-hour journey, go to headquarters, and we would go into this huge, humongous warehouse, filled to the roof, full of food, tins, products, whatever it was, fruit and vegetables, and we could take what we wanted. And they never ran out. And this is the amazing thing about God. Listen to what Jesus says. Jesus says in Matthew 6, he says, look at the birds. They don't plant, they don't harvest, they don't store food in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to Him? Right here, 
in our home. We've got a lot of trees around and we've got birds in the trees that nest. And, you know, just think of those little baby chicks that their meals are being provided for them day in, day out. And think of the biggest sea creature that you know, the, the blue whale. And just think about it. Every single day, an adult blue whale needs about 4,000 pounds of food, of krill, to be able to sustain itself. Who provides that? It's God. And God has such wonderful resources for us. So, you know, that really frees us up so much, doesn't it? You don't need to worry. God's got it taken care of. Um, and so he looks after us. And, um, you know, I... I heard a story about James Taylor. James Hudson Taylor was a, um, a missionary to China. And as a young man, as he was in training to, how to be a doctor there in England, and he lived in a very, very rundown area where money was scarce. And he went to go visit a woman who was dreadfully sick. Her, oh, I think it was her daughter, very sick on the point of death. And she begged Hudson Taylor for a coin, a silver coin. And all he had in his pocket was that coin. She needed it to buy food. And he went home with empty pockets. He had one meal left, a bowl of porridge. That's all he had. And he ate it, not knowing where that next meal was going to come from. And the next morning, there was a knock on his door. A package was given to him. And in place of that silver coin that he had given to that woman was a gold coin. Oh, wow. And I love what Hudson Taylor said because that was 400% more yeah. than what he had given away. Yeah. And he said, his words, that's a good interest. I invested it in God's bank for 12 hours and this is what it brought me. But that's really, it frees us up when you know that God is your supply, that he gives you your daily bread. Doesn't that free you and I up to give to be generous, of course it does. So think of those three thoughts there. Give us, we can come to God, ask, bring those needs. Day by day, it's a daily thing and our bread. He cares for us. And so I want to encourage you, this One Prayer Global is a great initiative. This is something awesome. And our prayer is that God would use this time to bring revival, not only to Florida, but to South Africa, to all the nations of the world, to Europe, South America, Central America, all these nations that are, have, well, they're believers that are praying and seeking God for revival, that he would answer that. Won't you even pray for revival here in South Africa? It's our prayer. It's our need. And listen, let me close with this. Prayer is the privilege of somebody who is a child of God. It's not to every human being, but it's to those of the family. Are you part of that family? Do you belong to the Lord Jesus? Have you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart by faith? Are you following him? Because that prayer begins with the words, Our Father. And so have you come into that son-daughter relationship with the King of Kings? And the Lord of Lords. If not, you make that decision today and invite Jesus. Take Jesus into your life. Let him wash away your sins and make you a new creature. And then you can pray for your daily bread.